Hello and welcome to another Spanish lesson with me, Eva. Today I will talk about tú and usted. Okay, so as I said, today we will talk about tú and usted. In English, in both cases, it's you, okay? So when you speak, you are I, and the person you are speaking to, the person in front of you, the person that's listening to you, you will refer to them as you, okay? Now, in English, it's always you. Even in plural, even if you have two or three or 50 people in front of you, <laughs> they will still be you, okay? Now, let's just stick with the singular, okay? So you've got one person in front of you and uh, depending on the sort of um, relationship or how close, how, how formal or informal, uh, how long you've known them, how old they are and how old you are, or high, how high up in hierarchy uh, they are, maybe in a company, and how low <laughs> you are, uh, how long you've known them for. Depending on many, many different factors, you will either be on a first name basis with that person, and it will be you, Mike, or you, uh, Betty, <laughs> I don't know, um, or it will be you, Mr. Uh, Rogers and Mrs. Uh, Green, for example, okay? So, even though in English it's always you, you do have a different way of addressing this person. Again, depending on different factors, you may be on a first name basis, in which case in Spanish you will use Tú, or you may be a bit more formal, a bit more, I won't say respectful, because even with two, you, 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 hopefully you still <laughs> respect this person, but um, to show maybe, uh, give uh, more respect, uh, so to speak, grammatically speaking, linguistically, I don't mean as a person to person, but but just uh, have it reflected in, in language. In Spanish, it would be, well, I won't use the, uh, the abbreviation, it will be usted, okay? So, tú is first name basis, you, Mike, come on, let's go, or usted is more Mr. and Mrs. When, when in English you would use Mr. and Mrs., that's when uh, in Spanish you want to use usted, okay? Now, why am I clarifying this? On the one hand, you need to know that there's two, okay? And, and, and sort of know, sense, when it's time to use tú and when the situation requires or expects you to use usted, okay? Now, depending on which one you are using, two things will change when you speak, okay? One is the verb, and another one is the pronoun, okay? When I say the verb, it's any verb in any tense, okay? There will be a different form when the person in front of you is a friend, a neighbor, a relative, someone you know when you are on first name basis, and there will be a different form of the verb when the person in front of you that you are talking to and addressing is not someone you know very well, not someone you're close with, not someone you've known for very long, not someone who's your age, but maybe much older. In that case, you will have to use usted, and that means that you will have to use a different form of the verb. 
It doesn't matter which verb you're using. It doesn't matter if you're using it in the present, past or the future tense. Any verb, any tense will have a different form for you to use with tu and a different one to use with usted. Okay? If you remember the grid, if you don't remember the grid, when this lesson finishes, please go back, find the, the lesson on the grid because it really is very important. But I just to remind you very quickly, this is the grid, okay? And tu is here and usted is here, okay? Now, it may happen that you're not talking to one person, maybe you're talking to two people, maybe there's a, a married couple in front of you and you, you know, it's Mr. and Mrs., not Mike and Betty, it's Mr. and Mrs. Rogers, then we have plural, two people, maybe even more, okay, in which case it's ustedes here, and if it's Mike and Betty, if it's two people that you are friends with and you know very well, okay, so in this case, when we have to worry about tu en usted, we don't need to worry about these two. It's only tu en vosotros, let's just say for friends and close, uh, and people that are close to us, and usted en ustedes for people that there's still some kind of a distance. Okay, so the verb for tu is this form here and for usted is this form here. And for vosotros it's here and for ustedes it's here. Okay, so tu is in singular but then also in plural and usted also has plural. So you, the English you, <laughs> can be translated in four different ways in Spanish, okay? And you need to know if it's these two, if you're close, friendly, informal, or if it's these two, if there's maybe some distance, maybe you don't know each other for very long, or maybe you need to show uh, some respect and you use these two instead, okay? So the English you has these four different forms, which means you will have to use four different forms of the verb, okay? The same will happen with the pronoun. I've given you the personal pronouns here already, but there's other type of pronouns. And just to give you an example, one of the very first questions that you're likely to ask someone when you first meet them is what their name is, or someone might ask you, no? Again, if it's a very informal setting, everyone's more or less the same age, and everyone's more or less youngish, you will immediately strike a conversation and you will be on the first name basis straight away, okay? So in English, you would say, what's your name? Or may I have your name, please? Or, what's your name? In Spanish, if you're asking someone that you expect to be on the first name basis straight away, you will say, como te, this is a pronoun, llamas. Como te llamas? What's your name? Yes, you are meeting them for the first time, obviously, you don't know their name yet, but you expect this relationship to, to be sort of, you know, a re of equals, so to speak, no? and you use 
tú. So, ¿cómo te llamas? Llamas would be he. However, if you are a clerk and this gentleman in some kind of government office or, I don't know, in a bank and a gentleman comes in or a lady or you, will, you don't know them, um, maybe they're not a regular customer and you haven't had a chance to establish, uh, you know, a more sort of uh, laid back and informal um, relationship or rapport with them, you will address them as usted, sir or madam, no? And uh, you would ask this person, como se llama, okay? So as I said, it's both the verb and the pronoun that get affected when we switch from tú to usted, okay? Como te llamas? Hey, what's your name? No? Como se llama? Sir, may I have your name? Uh, okay, so como te llamas for tú and como se llama for usted, okay? Two things to remember here. One, when to use one, when to use the other. You need to, you need to know that there is <laughs> this other, no? Because in English, it's you. It's you all the time. Uh, again, using Mike or using Mr. Rogers tells you that it's not quite the same you. But in Spanish, you have tú and you have usted, which means you use either one or another verb form, okay? And that's only in the singular, then there's also plural, because you might have two, three or more people um, that you are addressing. And again, if they're not your best pals, your BFFs, you uh, will most likely have to address them as ustedes, no? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen is Ustedes, it's not you guys. Ladies and gentlemen is ustedes, damas y caballeros. Okay, good. So, on the one hand, you need to know, oof, how, how am I speaking to this person? Is it, you know, first name basis or am I using usted? And depending on the choice, you also have to make the right choice of the verb and the right choice of the pronoun, okay? When there is a pronoun, not always. You don't always have a pronoun um, with the verb, but sometimes you do, okay? So the pronoun will, in that case, also have to reflect your choice, okay? Between, let's just say, informal and a bit more formal, okay? Good. Well, that's all about tú and usted. Remember, the Spanish do use usted less and less. They're becoming a more laid-back society, more and more, but you will still hear usted uh, a lot. And if you fail to use usted in some situations, um, maybe as a foreigner, you will get away with it. But as a Spanish person, it might be looked down on as, <clears throat> uh, as not the right way to, to speak, okay? So um, it still exists, it's still around, the difference between these two, it's still in use. And um, yeah, I, I suggest that you learn both and when, when, when needed, when necessary, when you feel it's the right thing, use usted and the corresponding verb and the corresponding pronoun, okay? So this, of course, will come uh, with practice. As you practice uh, verbs, you will remember that the third one here at the bottom is the usted one, and it will come naturally to you. Uh, but now you just need to understand 
the concept, the, the idea of distinguishing between tu and usted. Okay, that's all for today. Again, if you are enjoying these lessons, if you find them informative, if you find them easy to understand, easy to follow and helpful, please uh, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more and more of them in the future. And uh, click that bell button. And yeah, any lesson that you like uh, a lot, you can show it by liking the video as well. Okay. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next lesson.